hello and welcome back uh, to another session of this lecture series and today we'll be looking at a combination of antibiotics that's reserved for severe infections and that's imipenem plus silastatin. I uh, will also look at a few other antibiotics in this class and uh, that will be all for the day. Uh, so if we look at a class of antibiotics then uh, this is uh, carbamapenems, I hope the pronunciation is right. Uh, now these are beta lactam antibiotics which have broad spectrum of activity and they are active against gram positive organisms, pseudomonas organisms, uh, anaerobes. Uh, enterobacteriaceae and penicillinase producing organisms. So, there's something which is a higher order antibiotic and which can be used for uh, severe and reserve infections in individuals. Now, if you want to learn about the concept of uh, why we want to add uh, imipenem, that's the prototype antibiotic in this class with uh, uh, with other drug like silastatin. Now, that's where it goes. Here you have a boy with high IQ and uh, who is quite intelligent I should say uh, but he is losing all his capacity all his uh, potency in uh, watching this television here and basically the efficacy as far as outcomes are concerned maybe academics or any other outcome in his life is concerned now that's a failure uh, his high potency but low efficacy because it's not something we use goal directed he is losing his energy to something else now what can be done about this is that you want to stop the signals coming to this team, the television. So you want to cut off the cable line so that there is no signal reaching in the television and, <coughs> and that's how you probably can divert his attention to uh, some more useful things in his life and not just waste his talent in uh, just watching television. So this concept we can utilize when we want to learn about the combination of imipenem plus silastatin. Uh, so if you want to look at this antibiotic, as I said earlier, it belongs to a class uh, which is beta-lactam antibiotic. It's broad spectrum, high potency, <coughs> resistant to action of beta-lactamases, resistant to action of penicillinase and um, the spectrum includes gram positive and gram negative organisms and half life of around one uh, now the basic point is that and the negative point about this antibiotic is that though high potency uh, resistant to actions of most of the enzymes but then it's get hydrolyzed by enzyme dihydropeptidases from the renal tubules so that's where it goes so uh, it won't be effective that much because it's getting destroyed somewhere <coughs> quickly so Anyway, so that that's the uh, that that's a negative aspect as far as this antibiotic is concerned. Now, this antibiotic, uh, being a broad spectrum antibiotic, can give us a GIT upset, diarrhea, skin rash. Uh, people who are prone to seizures might get seizures if you want to start this antibiotic. Uh, raise renal function test. You want to adjust the dose of this antibiotic if the clearance is not uh, okay. Blood count disturbances can occur but very rare and hypersensitivity, you want to ask patients whether there were any earlier hypersensitivity in, uh, episodes uh, when uh, they were given any kind of penicillin or cephalosporins or any other antibiotic <coughs> or drugs in general, you want to know that thing. Anyway, it's true for most of the drugs, so it holds for this drug but especially with penicillins and cephalosporin, you need to be aware of when you want to start this antibiotic. Uh, so it's getting destroyed imipenem so what to do next you want to add some more antibiotic and that's silastatin and that's an inhibitor of dihydropeptidase uh, dihydropeptidase one enzyme uh, and this enzyme is present within the renal tubules so that gets inhibited with the help of this substance of the drug and uh, that's why it gives a free way for imipenem to act Okay, so that that's the win-win situation when uh, when you add imipenem plus silastatin. Uh, of course, silastatin has a pharmacokinetic similar to imipenem, and uh, the inhibition that occurs for the enzyme is reversible. So that's where the combination of silastatin and imipenem goes. So silastatin would something be like you know cutting off the cable wire so that you divert the attention of the boy to some other uh, useful activities in the life instead of watching the television. So that's where it signs for all concept goes as far as this combination is concerned. Now, as I said to you, it uh, it's resistant to actions of most of the enzymes. So it's a spare drug for reserve and. Uh, 
severe infections uh, and resistant infections. So, you can see all these infections here, serious hospital acquired infections, respiratory, abdominal, gynae, soft tissue, bone, joint infections, respiratory infections. Uh, you talk of all these infections, now this combination may not be uh, the first choice of course, but then if the infection is severe, <coughs> life threatening, resistant, then you want to use this antibiotic. Do not use this antibiotic alone for serious pseudomonas infections. You want to, of course, add a few other uh, antibiotics to make your therapy uh, more useful. Uh, there is a caution if you want to use this antibiotic in pregnancy and lactation. There is very less data available, but again, you know, look at the pros and the cons, but it is not an absolute contraindication. You want to look at uh, what kind of infection it is, severity, life threatening or not, and depending upon the trimester of the pregnancy, depending upon the stage of infection, condition of the individual, take the most ethical decision uh, as far as this antibiotic combination is concerned. Now, if you want to look at the doses of, for this antibiotic combination, then uh, uh, for moderate infections, uh, IV injections uh, slowly. For susceptible organisms, uh, 500 milligrams eight hourly. Uh, moderately susceptible organisms, you want to give 500 milligrams IV uh, six hourly, or increase it to one gram IV eight hourly. Uh, for severe infections, you want to give injection slowly. For susceptible organisms, 500 milligrams IV six hourly. For moderately susceptible organisms, increase the dose to one gram IV six hourly. Uh, but do not exceed the dose uh, beyond 50 milligrams per kg body weight or 4 grams day, whichever is the lower in case of your patient. Uh, as far as the renal impairment is concerned, then yes, uh, there are concerns. You want to look at the clearance rate and then decide uh, how much dose of this antibiotic should be given. Of course, first try to increase the duration in between the doses. So, start from 6 and go up to 12. Uh, but if that's not useful, then try to cut down on the dose. Of course, it's not contraindicated even if the patient is in stage renal disease with hemodialysis. But then again, look at the doses and decide <coughs> what is the best for the individual. Not look at the doses, I should say. Look at uh, the levels of RFT, that's renal function test, and then decide what's uh, the best for the patient. Okay. I hope I have it's correct yes it's correct okay so yes uh, one more uh, thing about this combination is the resistance mm, yes it's a disturbing fact and uh, as i said it's the higher order of antibiotic and uh, uh, if we start getting resistant to the use of this antibiotic then probably the question is is that are we using battle against microbes uh, but as said here, intelligence and consciousness is beyond our limits to understand. And that's what is the thing. Uh, we think we are like super human beings. We understand everything and can devise uh, drugs and machines which can tackle anything in this nature. But that doesn't happen that way. Uh, microbes are cleverer than what we are. And they always uh, are at the forefront of, uh, uh, I should say, developing their own mechanisms by which they can tackle antibiotics and one of the things that has happened in the recent past is the development of uh, this gene which has been discovered which is called as the New Delhi metallo beta lactamase gene NDM1. Now why it should be named with this city I really don't know maybe there are a lot of cases in and around this region where resistant to this antibiotic has been seen again it points out to policy who is using the antibiotic are we uh, utilizing antibiotics rationally or not <coughs> and so on but anyway that's the case that uh, comes up and uh, that's disturbing because if we uh, find that even this antibiotic combination is not working due to resistance we hardly have any antibiotics left so that's what is the problem uh, anyway this gene helps in production of metallo beta lactamases enzyme that hydrolyzes carbamapenem antibiotics in general 
so anyway a few other gene mutations have occurred and have been observed that helps in a uh, new expression of proteins and uh, efflux pumps that have become more active which throws out these antibiotics outside uh, the cells of the organisms if i'm correct it was all about the e coli organism uh, that this antibiotic resistance was first seen and uh, that is becoming a worldwide phenomena so uh, it's something that needs to be uh, dealt with uh, in the near future because we don't have unfortunately we don't have new antibiotics in pipeline that can support uh, such a resistance if it occurs and we can still manage on if we feel so then uh, there is a lot of issue with uh, uh, I, mean, I mean it's a real concern in medical world if you start getting resistant to even such higher uh, order antibiotics the next in the class uh, is uh, meropenem. Uh, now remember this is also uh, the same class of antibiotics but it is not hydrolyzed by dihydroproteinases so that's important so it can be given a standalone antibiotic we do not require the other uh, inhibitor of that enzyme celastatin which needs to be given along with uh, the earlier antibiotic in the so less chances of seizure uh, serious hospital acquired infection again the same as that of the earlier combination given as 0.5 to 2 grams by slow IV infusion 6 to 8 hourly <coughs> you can give us bolus in some life threatening conditions where you feel that it is a case of septicemia and infection is really spreading to almost all organs and it's kind of an end stage uh, for that patient so you can also give us bolus in doses but needs to be discussed before giving such a uh, process to the individuals uh, the next in this uh, uh, class is uh, doripenem and it's also antibiotic which is active against gram positive gram negative not active against mr is susceptible to actions of uh, the enzyme uh, which is produced by the ndm1 uh, so it's active it's, it's, I should say <coughs> to a limited extent against pseudomonas organisms, uh, complicated severe urinary tract infections, intra infection. In fact, if you look at uh, the, uh, the conditions for all for all these antibiotics, they remain the same: severe and resistant hospital infections. So that's where you want to use this in uh, antibiotics. Uh, side effects. Uh, generally same seizures nausea diarrhea thrombophlebitis uh, blood uh, count problems severe skin reactions but rare uh, iv final milligrams 8 hourly for 7 to 10 dose 7 to 10 days depending upon severity of the infection for renal conditions you want to reduce the dose to 250 first and then to increase the duration uh, in between the, the doses to 12 hourly but you want to check the tables before you want to do such uh, adjustments uh, for this antibiotics but we do not want to give this antibiotic again with uh, celastatin uh, that's not necessary but again resistant to this antibiotic is seen and that's also a worrying factor uh, the next in the class is arthapenem uh, it has a serum half-life of this uh, antibiotic is more single daily dose as compared to the earlier ones where it has to be given 6 to 8 hourly. You do not use dextrose for dilution for giving this antibiotic active against gram positive, uh, anaerobes, enterobacteria say and so on. Again, you want to give this antibiotic it remains uh, uh, the indications remain the same except for you want to use for profile access in colorectal surgeries. Okay. Anyway, ab abdominal infections, there is always uh, life threatening abdominal infections, there is always uh, a chance where you want to give this antibody. Uh, as far as resistance is concerned, then the resistance has been reported and uh, it has inferior activity against pseudomonas organisms. Again, uh, side effect profile remains almost the same as with the other antibiotics in the class. Uh, dose is 1 gram OD, uh, you want to check dose for pediatric population depending upon the per kg body weight of the individual. Uh, the next in the class is ferropenem and actually it does not fit in this group, it's actually something else but anyway it's orally effective that's what is the take home message. It is highly active against gram positive and gram negative infections used for severe and resistant cases and for maintenance therapy since it is oral it's basically for maintenance therapy you want to send a patient home maybe you want to use this antibiotic 
जो है एबसेट नहीं आकर सिंस इट इज गिवन ओरली सो डायरिया कैन बी अ इंपॉर्टेंट साइड इफेक्ट ऑफ दिस एंटीबायोटिक नो डोज फॉर दिस एंटीबायोटिक इज 200 मिलीग्राम सर थ्री टाइम्स अ डे फॉर फाइव टू सेवन डेज डिपेंडिंग अपॉन सीवियरिटी ऑफ द इंफेक्शन आई होप दैट वाज ऑल फॉर द डे स्टार्टेड ऑफ विथ the uh, combination and then went on with uh, certain other antibiotics in the class which are not given as per uh, the combination uh, thank you keep watching enjoy listening and learning and uh, do subscribe bye